Hey, if you've been following all the drama with the new cult pythons, and I say drama in quotes because it's all fake, it's all created, well, you know that I called out Hickok45 on his video on the python. When I called him out, I said, hey, you either don't know how to shoot a revolver or you're being dishonest because what he clearly did was short stroke the trigger and that's user error, not a malfunction of a gun. If you watch the video, he's pulling the trigger with his trigger finger and he's fanning the hammer back with his thumb. If you watch the tendons in his hand and his knuckles, you can see at one point he doesn't release the trigger before he fans back the hammer, the cylinder doesn't turn. That's called short stroking. It's very easy to do. For people who don't believe it's easy to do, I already demonstrated it once, I'll demonstrate it again. As you can see, all you have to do is not fully release the trigger before you pull back the hammer, the cylinder will not turn, you have short stroked that gun. Now, most people who are familiar with shooting revolvers will say, oops, I short stroked the trigger if they noticed that the cylinder didn't turn. If they didn't notice the cylinder didn't turn, they'd probably wait three to five seconds, make sure it wasn't a hang fire, and then they would release the trigger and try to fire again. Hickok didn't do that. He actually just went, oh my, what's going on? I, don't know, I couldn't possibly know what's happening right here. But what's going on with this gun? Uh, which is something that anyone that's familiar with a revolver would not have done in that situation. They would have been like, hey, I probably just short stroked the trigger. Let's just release the trigger again and let it fire. But a lot of people were like, oh, you're just being unfair to Hickok and blah, blah, blah. And I don't think I was. And now more information has come out. Uh, an article from, I believe it was Field and Stream, and then uh, information from Colt themselves. And I wanted to talk about both of those things today because we were like, no, you owe, you owe Hickok an apology. They said Hickok was right and blah, blah, blah. And actually, they said no such thing. Now, before we actually get to what Colt said, let's talk about the article in Field and Stream. I found this article almost comical because they talk about how, you know, Hickok had his problems, but then competing channels that's one of the things I find wrong with people like Hickok and thing and these big publications like Field and Stream is they see us as competitors, not as people working towards a common goal in the Second Amendment. They think everyone's a business trying to make the dollar before everybody else makes it. But they say that competitors made other videos about the gun, some claiming similar problems. Actually, only one other person had that problem that didn't know what was going on. But they say, some channels seemed more interested in discrediting Hickok, claiming he either deliberately caused a malfunction or didn't know how to operate a double action revolver. Gee, I wonder who that would be. I wonder who would have done that. Who dare question Hickok? Well, they go on to talk about how they spoke to Hickok, who rarely gives interviews, and asked that they not use his real name. His real name's Greg, by the way who said, there was no motive behind it. He actually goes on to say, I've probably put 200,000 rounds through double action revolvers over the years, and I have owned about 50 of them, including two or three pythons. Which, uh, how does that discredit anything what we just said? How's that, what does that have to do with anything? All that does is basically saying, oh, hey, it's not that I don't know what I was doing, it's just that I'm dishonest. So I don't see how uh, that's a defense of what happened. And then he goes on to try to talk about how, well, usually if we have problems with a gun, we don't post it. Well, that's funny. He posted this one, but he tries to make it like, oh, well, the only reason we posted it is because it did so good up till the end, and then we posted it. That doesn't make any sense. If you don't show a video, if there's malfunctions in the first video, what does it matter where it occurs in the video? That argument makes no sense. They even went and posted a message at the beginning to make sure everyone sees the malfunction because the video is over 35 minutes long, he says. And that's another thing. Why the fuck is that video over 35 minutes long? Ugh, just no reason for that in itself. But he goes on to say one thing right here that makes me absolutely certain that he either doesn't know what he's doing or he's a fucking liar. He says, the cylinder wasn't turning and it was doing it in both double and single action. I'm not sure how I could fake something like that. It's easy to fake. I already showed you that it's easy to fake. And here's the thing. That means he knows the problem was that the cylinder wasn't turning while he was thumbing the hammer. That means he should know that you can easily cause that to happen. Not, how can I fake that? It's easy to fake. I just showed you that. I've showed you that in the past. I just showed you in this video. So he is full of shit. He doesn't know what he's talking about or he's a liar. 
Then we get a statement from Justin Baldini, who's Colt's product director, who says the first thing they did when they got uh, the Colt back from Hickok, and I'm not going to call it Hickok's Python because he didn't pay for it. He doesn't buy guns and then give reviews on how they function over time. He just does paid reviews of guns he got yesterday, which he'll send back tomorrow. Uh, so they said the first thing we did was we looked at the screws on the side plate to see if the side plate was loose because they explained, you know, how that can cause the hand to malfunction if the side plate is loose, which is true, but they're like, nope, it wasn't loose. And they go on to say, so they're not 100% sure what caused the problem with Hickok's gun. And, you know, so they say no one's denying that it's malfunction, that it's not in quotation marks. Yeah, there's a reason why it's not in quotation marks, because Phil in the stream is kissing Hickok's ass. Uh, and Colt does to an extent, too, because they don't want to come right out and say, shouldn't have malfunctioned. So they say, we're not, why, not sure why it malfunctioned. Well, when I spoke to them, they just pretty much clearly said, nothing wrong with that gun. It shouldn't have malfunctioned. Looks like someone short-stroked the trigger. So once again, don't know Hickok uh, any type of apology whatsoever because he's absolutely in the wrong. Uh, he's either being dishonest or he just doesn't know what he's talking about. Either way, there's an issue here, since so many people pay attention to what he says. Uh, but it goes a little further here, because after that article came out, well, Colt released a video itself addressing some of the issues with the Python. Now, in that video, they say a lot of things. The first thing they say is kind of weird to me that they even say this. And this is uh, from... And I'm taking this text from an article in the American Rifleman. They say that in the video, uh, Colt highlighted the fact that employees had heard about light strikes and that they were able to recreate light strikes using imported ammo with really hard primers. So in other words, they were using really cheap imported hard primer ammo uh, that I can't imagine anyone would actually put through their new $1,400 Colt Python. And then they were able to recreate the light strike issue. Well, I don't even know why they bothered to say that because that's true of every gun. Anyone that's ever fired a gun knows that hard primers on import guns are often an issue with American guns or newer guns, uh, especially something like the Colt Python which is made to have a really nice trigger. They say they're going to increase the hammer power in the guns. Uh, to do that, they're going to have to make the trigger a little heavier because you have to overcome the hammer spring to actually be able to fire the gun. So it's going to make the trigger a little less light, but it'll be able to handle hard primers. I would rather they leave the trigger the way it is and people just know not to shoot freaking cheap ammo in their Colt Python that's been imported with these really nasty primers. But they decided they're going to make it to where it'll fire anything at the expense of the trigger. I still think the trigger will be great, but it won't be as good as it could be because, like I said, it'll have to be a little bit heavier. But they also go on to say another issue with the guns is that they found some loose side plates. They found some side plates that had some loose screws, and if side plates are loose enough, it'll affect how the hand functions, and that can cause the cylinder not to turn. Hey, who would have ever thought it might have been the hand? Hmm, I wonder who that could have been. But uh, here's the thing about that. I think that's total bullshit. And from some people I've talked to inside of Colt or representatives around Colt, they're like, I think that's legal speak and being bullshit too. They seem to think there was some problem with some hands, just like I thought there were some problems with some hands. Because here's the thing about the side plate being loose. It has to be pretty loose before it started affecting things like this. So if your side plate was that loose, I would think you would notice it. Because when you're looking down the gun, you're looking at right one of the main seams of the side plate. So I think you'd see that. And I think you'd see it's loose. I don't buy that people are out there with their side plates half hanging off uh, and don't notice it. Just don't buy that at all. I think it was a metallurgy issue with the hands and that they have had some damage to some of the hands. And they just don't want to say that because then everyone who bought a gun will want to send it back and get the hand fixed. This way, people will just check their screws and be happy. Now, in the article, they also say if you have an issue with these guns, if you have one that the cylinder's not turning, send the gun back. They don't say just tighten your side plate, which I think they would do if it was just a side plate issue. They say send it in. And then they're going to inspect the hand for damage and possibly replace the hand and then put your side plate back on properly. That, to me, seems like a lot of trouble to go to. If it's just a problem with some loose screws, they would just say tighten the screws. Uh, they wouldn't tell everybody to send their gun back in. Uh, so that just makes me believe, and I've been backed up by some people at Colt, that that's just a way of saying there's some hand issues. If you have the hand issues, send it back. If you don't, don't. And they're going to take care of it. But who would have guessed it was the hand? Well, I don't know who would have guessed it was the hand. Oh, I don't know. Maybe me, since I did a video saying exactly that immediately after Hickok had his problem. So seems like I was right. Now, I'm not one to gloat, well, maybe I am, but everything that's come out since this happened leans towards me being correct. In the end, 
Colt's going to have to replace some hands. There's no recall. They're just going to replace some hands for people that had issues. That's pretty much what I said would end up being the problem. Whatever caused it, that's the problem. As far as for what Hickok said, I think we addressed that in this video. Oh, how could I possibly fake something like that? We showed how you can fake something like that. Uh, we showed that you don't, uh, that you weren't waiting for a hang fire. That's not why you were standing there like an idiot, because you said you knew the cylinder didn't turn. Uh, we exposed the, your own hypocrisy on how you deal with guns and how malfunctions in their first video. What you said about that made no sense. Oh, because it was at a certain point in the video, I made sure to leave it in, and then I actually pointed out to where it happens. Makes no sense. Uh, we did get under his skin a little bit, it appears, when people say, he didn't even know what you say. Looks like he noticed when he made a little special interview that he never does talk about how good he is at shooting guns. Uh, like I said, that I've never seen any proof of. He never made a shot that I found particularly impressive. He's never done anything I find impressive. He's never told me how a part on a gun works. He's never done anything good for the Second Amendment or the gun community as a whole other than just spew NRA garbage for money. Like I said, he's never done anything to impress me. And the experiences I've had with him personally show me what kind of fud he is. So, but in this case, just in this case alone, it looks like I was right and everything he said was either bullshit or ignorance. So do I owe him an apology? No fucking way. In fact, maybe he owes an apology to his viewers.